Hi sewing friends. I have something a little bit different to share with you today. I have been needing, wanting, wanting slash needing a design wall here in my sewing room. This is not something I've ever had before, but now I have a very small sewing room and I used to be able to lay quilts and things out on the floor to arrange them, but I don't have that kind of floor space anymore. I'm also a very fly by the seat of my pants quilter and I like to just design it as I go. And so I need space for that. So I was watching Kate's channel. One of my uh, viewers here left me a comment about Kate's channel. I'm gonna put it in the this side. <laughs> Link her channel for you. And she said, if you have space for a design wall, you really should prioritize it. And so I'm prioritizing it. Basically a design wall is for mostly quilting and it's made out of things like flannel or quilt batting or felt and quilt blocks sort of stick to it so that you can design your quilt layout as you're going. And so I was looking into ideas for how to DIY one. Of course you can buy them pre-made and they're on nice frames and things, but those I noticed are mostly for like a freestanding situation, not to really be installed in the wall. And so I'll link you to those because they're pretty nice, but obviously they're, they're pricier than I wanted to spend this time. And so you can also kind of make one yourself. You can use some foam board and things like that, or even like particle board to attach or adhere like a flannel sheet to, or a big piece of batting or felt. Or the cheapest way, obviously, is to just tack a piece of flannel batting or felt to the wall. I wanted mine to not cost very much, and I wanted it to look nice. Because I do not want a piece of just tacked up, draping quilt batting. Also quilt batting, I feel like, or even just white flannel or something, it will attract every thread and fuzz in my sewing room, and. If it had sloppy edges, I just, those two things combined would make me never want to look at it and I probably wouldn't last very long. So what I did find was these felt um, soundproof panels. And these came in 20 packs. So I got two packs, so I have 40 to work with. And there were some that had ad adhesive backing that you just tear off the adhesive backing and you stick it to the wall. But the review said, it is hard to get off if I ever moved my sewing room, if one of my kids moves out <laughs> and I take over one of their rooms, I did not want to be sitting there with a hair dryer getting all the sticky stuff off my walls. So instead I bought the 3M adhesive squares that were recommended to go with this. I left them out there, I don't have them. So these arrived, my husband thought this would be a good idea and that it would work. And so my felt panels arrived and they have like a sort of coated side on the back and then the front is more like felt, but it wasn't very soft. I kind of needed it to be fuzzier to, for it to really stick my quilt pieces on it. So my husband gave me a sanding block and it only took me like 20 minutes to sort of just rough up the felt. And now my quilt blocks stick to it. They probably don't stick as well as they would to like a piece of batting, but I still feel like this was a good solution for me, not only because it won't look like a mess, it won't attract all of the fuzz that a piece of batting would, and for video purposes in this room, it will offer sort of a soundproofing and it won't allow the sound to echo. So that's sort of a side note for my purposes, this works better. So my husband and son are out there taping them into a grid on the back. They are just sort of duct taking, duct, duct taping them together. I'm gonna make a grid of five by six and I'll take you along we'll see how it works. Here is a view of my sewing room. It's not super clean right now, but there's my sewing machine and here's my cutting table. And then I have this little hallway here that I keep my ironing board in and my dress form and a mirror. <laughs> so this wall here is where I'm going to put my design wall. And it will live here behind my ironing board. And I can always move this ironing board to the other side over here. Okay, so first they're putting them, you're gonna tape the squares together. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. And then we will mount it to the wall. Then we're gonna put the sticky squares on and mount it to the wall.
test. We built we built uh, half of it and it's working. It works well. Yeah. What babe? This one is a little heavy, but it's fine now. Mm. Cool. Yeah, keep it taut. There is no such thing as overkill. Right, babe? <laughs> if it moves and it shouldn't, okay. <laughs> Okay, they're bringing it in. Go, go past. It <laughs> takes, the takes all three of my children and my husband. The trick is not to let the sticky tabs touch the wall before we have it where we need it to go. <laughs> Woo! Let's go, Dad. Here. You got it? Girls, come here. Stop goofing off. Good job, babe. Okay. Here, put my quilt square on it. Put it right here. Oh. Aw, you can design it for me. <laughs> yeah, looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, my design wall was a success. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It holds pretty well and even if there's heavy blocks or things that don't stick very well it's very easy to stick them in with a pin instead and that is not something you could do as easily with just hanging up a piece of batting or other options like the foam core where you would just get tons of holes in it over time another perk of this more solid material for this purpose is that I saw some people who had DIY design walls. Whenever they walk by it or a breeze catches it or a window's open or the fan is on, things would blow around. So I do like the idea of pinning them directly to the design wall in, in order to make that not happen. I will definitely link you to these products that I used. Altogether, this cost me less than $60. So I'll link you to these sound panels. They're 12 inch squares. I don't think I mentioned that before. They come in packs of 20 and to the little 3M sticky squares. I will also link to the video where I taught you how to make those flying geese blocks that I just hung up on my design wall. They're really easy. That's the quilt that I'm working on currently. Whenever I have spare time and want to sew, but I don't have a current project going, I just pull out some scraps and make some flying geese because it's just such a fun scrap friendly block and pretty soon I'll have enough to make a quilt, I hope. My husband really wants me to make a very large quilt because he's tall. You saw him. That was the first time he's been on my channel, I think. And he always complains that my quilts don't reach from head to toe when he's fully stretched out. So maybe I'll just make this one extra long just for him. So if you have thoughts about quilt design walls, if you have one, if you've made one, if you want one, let us know about it in the comments and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.